here, baby. Let's do this. Another week, another Monday. Um, thank you guys for listening, subscribing. Without all of you guys watching right now and listening, wherever it's on Apple, Spotify, or YouTube, or even watching the clips on Instagram, can't do this without you guys. And today, again, we're leveling up the conversations. The people that we get to sit down with are one of the most powerful in their industry and in their own truth in their life. And today, I get the pleasure to sit down with, man, an LA native. You've seen him in movies. You've heard his music. The one and only Conejo, man. Let's do this. <laughs> Appreciate you coming through, man. Giving, giving you, giving us a little bit of your time to talk a little bit about your story, where you're born and raised. So, for the people that don't know you, if you if you don't mind sharing where were you born, uh, growing up, right here in LA, like born right here, and I grew up like not too far from here, like probably like ten minutes away, mm -hmm. like the West Adams district, which is like right there, right on the other side of the the one ten. Yeah, so it's like close by from where we are right now. You were born and raised here in 1974. So how, right now, right before Canada, you're like, this, where we're at right now was totally different. Totally different. Um, in 90, I met this, um, in 90, uh, I don't know if you guys know OG Chino from Escala, the restaurant. Mm. It's a Korean-Colombian restaurant in K-Town. No, I'm not too familiar with okay, it. But Chino, he's from 18th Street. Mm. And um, back in the day, like in 1990, like, you know, we would have like neighborhood parties and his girl was from Easy Riders, West Side Easy Riders, another neighborhood from up here close by. And they would, the, the girls from Easy Riders would go party with us, you know? And then um, she was like, hey, my boyfriend got a, a record company, record label, whatever. Gave me a little business card, B-Boy Records. Mm -hmm. But it was a record shop that he had over there on Slauson, like a vinyl shop. Like one of the first ones here in LA. So Le Marco Alwe y hey, I rap or whatever. Que la verga y que. Okay, pues déjate venir pa' acá. So he gives me the address, which is right here, like two blocks away, 900 East First Street, right here on Vickness and Shit. right here. Yeah. Like walking distance from where we are exactly right here right now. And um, llego pa' allá, y me and one of my bros pull up con pinches notebooks y todo un chingo de raps. <laughs> And they have like a cassette deck, like like a studio, but not no real gear like that. Yeah. And they're playing like fucking instrumentals. Like remember back there the the mixers had like a, a looping. You could like loop for like a basic loop. You could hit it off the off the off the, the DJ mixer. I'm I'm metting in rapiando like hours and shit, right? Yeah. S smoking out. And then um so from there we like we we ended up like we you know we we came together you know and later I came back with equipment and I meet um antes le decían Will One X from from Black before, I, yeah, before yeah. Black Eyed Peas then they had a group called my App Band Clan even before that because they became App Band Clan a little bit after when they signed to Ruthless Damn. so we all like that was like the headquarters with um I vivía este DJ Motive que se llama Monroe Walker. His mom was like a model. Um, his brothers were boxers, and and they were like in the modeling. So that whole building was like, was just like artistic people, you know. So I was around painters. I started being around like poets and producers, and yeah. and his mentor, which was this one producer named George Black, that had, they had just came back from the Philippines producing an album. Mm. So me, fucking hood baby from right here, we. This was like a little getaway from over there. We're over here gang banging, like all this shit going on over here. Le marcamos este way. Hey, hey, we got some weed. Wanna fucking um work on some beats? All right, come through. We'll like escape from the hood. Come over here. Smoking, like working on beats. And then they would have parties right there in the loft. Cause they don't put those lofts right there, right? So, and again, we're going to these parties with all these like artsy people and shit. And we're like, oh shit. It's cool. It's, you know, the hood parties were the shit, but yeah. this was something different. And then that's where we, like, um, you know, we just started getting into music, like, because, you know, back in the days, you dig in, you dig in the crates. Y ahí es cuando empezamos a descubrir que, que, you know, Coltrane or Miles Davis y que la verga y que that sound, you know, 
the little yeah. licks and beats get little sounds you get them from that like jazz records and then you know like just we're trying to find loops back then it was all about finding the loop the right loop to rap on you know yeah and this area was like barren it was it, it was artsy but it was barren it was just like a lot of movies would get filmed out here mm. up on this street the main street yeah, yeah yeah so we just would sit out here and like take smoke breaks and just sit here and watch everybody production going on, big productions you know cars crashing and Come on, why did, how they say, like, your life was, you were living your life in real time as a movie yeah. with so many things going on at the same yeah, time. At the same time. Same time. Para entender un poquito más, what got you into music from the, from the beginning? How old were you when you just started? I think, like, desde que, desde que llegó hip-hop a L.A., we mm -hmm. were already into it because we were breakdancing. L.A. was like a, it was like a mixed bag of, of, of like, influences, like, you know, todos, pues, todos traíamos pelo largo. Every, we all, everybody was like a stoner, heavy metal. Mm. You know, we were into like all the bands, you know, and shit, and Iron Maiden, and, and th you know, bands like that. But then like hip hop, era como the balance. Yeah. You know, and then, pues, I'm Mexican, so we've been hearing like, you know, all that shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah definitely. Y Ramon Ayala and all that, that's already, that's that's the family, you know, y los bookies y que... <laughs> All that shit. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, y los temerarios, and just, we're hearing all this shit, but, but now, like, you take all that, and you're like, I want to make, I'll turn all that shit I just heard into a beat. Mm. You know, I want to turn all that shit into a beat, and, and then you're living some shit, so you're like, I want to say some shit. It was like the precursor to a corrido. <laughs> like, you want to say some real shit that you're living in a little rap it's on a, a beat. It's a, it's a musical diary. Yeah, so... You know, ahorita que we came over here, there's a corner, brand new building, and there's a picture of me on that corner, like, when I was, like, 16 years old. I'm wearing uh, white chucks, dicky painter pants, gray crew neck sweater, and I'm, like, throwing the H. I was a little kid on that corner right there. And it was all, it was all brick. Ahorita se mira, like, you know, it's concrete now, you know? Yeah. Like, but, so... So, does, so, like, being here, does that take you back in time a little bit? Yeah, yeah. In your childhood, donde... What, what's similar times, would you say that is, that's now compared to growing up back in L.A. in the 80s and 90s? Like, what do you mean? Similar times, meaning, like, creo que ahorita tenemos más como libertad to also be yourself, be outspoken, you know, go into different uh, things that you want to do with your life. You yeah, know, yeah. you're in... You're in music, you're now in movies, you're producing, so it's just, there's, the pe what people see now, it's a, it's a mashup of everything you had to go through yeah, yeah. back in the days, in the 90s, so what's, uh, growing up in the 90s, if you could take us back just a little bit of, como, que te tenías que enfrentar, like, what kind of person did you have to be in order to survive back in the day like that? Man, I remember on Motivate, like, you know, he, he used to go to L.A. High, right? Like, back then, L.A. High was, like, the hip-hop yeah. high school. You know, that's where him and Chino from 18, they were boys at, you know. Yeah. He used to motivate just new people from everywhere. Like, he was just, like, a, he was real cool, you know. He, in esos días, me acuerdo que he had a classic bug, red classic bug, clean as fuck, engine popping out the back. You know, it's like, kind of like a, almost like a muscle car, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He used to, I'm with him one day. I got a gun in my pocket, right? Este way se mete acá. We're over here by MacArthur Park. Se mete al barrio de la Mara. And they're deep out there. This is when fools will curb serve 30 guys out there. Se mete. I'm like, what you doing? He's like, nah, they know me. Don't worry about it. And they already knew his car. So they run up on the car and they're like, everybody's showing what they got, you know? And this fool, we just, he went to buy some weed. And I'm like, I got my hand on my, on my pocket like, like, I'm in danger, you know? I, I would never go there, I'm, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and, and this is like, it's active as fuck. These are the days where, it, this is the, the like the, the initial phase of where mass murders are about to start happening in L.A., you know? On, on this area, the west side, where, I, where I'm at, you know? Yeah. Just, uh, nothing happened, you know? They served us. They didn't even ask about me. I just, like, it was like if I didn't even exist, the money existed. That was the main thing, the money. Boom, boom. We were out of that. I was like, man, we'll be doing that shit. <laughs> you know, you know, like, he didn't. No entendía. No entendía, like, it was just, no es que no entendía, but it was just, 
he was he was like above it. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was LA, you know. How old were you at, at this like during these times? Man, I was like fifteen. When I came here for the first time, I was like 15, 16, mm-hmm. 17, that whole time we were right here. So, dude, kind of knowing a little bit about your story, and for the people that do know you, they've known you've been through some stuff, right? Like you've, again, you have, you lived, I, I want to say like different stages of your life, different phases, different chapters of your life. As I know that sky is, being in the streets, were you finding something that you were missing at home that you found it in the streets? I think that shit's just like, you're just in the streets and that's it. Like, mm. That shit just, it is and that's it. You're just there, you know? You don't, how are you going to know you're you're missing something if they never took nothing away? I'm just there, you know? Yeah. It's like when I hear shit like, oh shit, the economy and you know, like, oh, it, you know, the people are going to feel it as the people that have something. If you never had nothing, how are you going to feel the economy? It's like, the same shit. Was so your childhood, was it rough? Was it? I don't know. To me, it was fun. I grew up, like, <laughs> I grew up right there. But it was right USC, you know? So we yeah. we um, we um grew up right there, you know, skating in, in the village, that whole 32nd Street market area. And yeah. Playing video games, pool hopping, stealing bikes, and just like. like it was just, fun to you. It was just adrenaline. It was you with your friends, your homies. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I never, like. See nothing bad about it. Just normal. Yeah. And then, um, like, ya cuando, when the gangs came, the gangs always been right there. That whole area right there, that our neighborhood, it's a hard piece. It's always been right there. But when it was time to join the gang, it didn't even feel like, it was just like. To my homies. Like the next stage. Okay, yeah, everybody's banging now. That's the next thing. You know, and then you just go do it. It's yeah. Like, like, oh, my dad was in there. Yeah, that fool was in there, but that shit don't matter, you know? Yeah. If he was there, it would still been the same shit, you know? Because I got a lot of homies that, that their parents were strict as fuck. Melosa and Haman Salid, and all these fools became lifers. All these fools ended up becoming, like, psychopaths and shit like that, you know? They had parents and all that, you know, like, on them. Yeah. Juan Salid, that whooping that ass because fool hanging out with the homies, and them fools, a lot of them fools became lifers, you know? So how did you how did you manage to just maneuver through all that then? Como again, estás en el medio de todo. I don't even think you manage. You just you just you going just through going it. Through, you just going through it. If you if if you um if you stumble and fall on this path, ah, that fool you know that fool stumbled and fell. Mm. And then if he got up, oh, he got up. He's still with us, you know. But I don't think like I don't know. It's just, and even when a lot of people started dying, you know, a lot of people start dying in these times. But everybody's dying, you know? Because, you know, like, like I lived in these, um, in those apartments. I yeah, even a bunch of dudes from Westside Playboys. And even them, they were going to a gang of funerals just like us. They were losing a lot of people. And, and now that I, you know, I, I got friends from everywhere now, you know, and we all went through the same shit. Like, I'm telling from, like, different gangs, you know? Yeah. And when we sit there and talk, everybody everybody took L's, you know, on every side. Like, I don't think there's, there was a winner, you know? Everybody, and but it's, like I said, you just keep going and going and going. Well, how old were you when you when you went through your first experience of, like, death? I was, I was young. I was a little kid. I seen some shit. Yeah. Well, everybody seen it. And then, but it wasn't, like... Yeah, it was kind of like, yeah, it's kind of amazing, you know, like, that. yeah, so I say, but, but, but then later, then there was a big period where nothing, and then the shit started happening. Was there a, uh, was there a time where you witnessed, or you went through a death that really, like, changed you, like, that cambió la vida? Or that, or it hurt just a little bit more? I think so. Well, I think that there was like, I think that there was like deaths that affected other people. And then me seeing like, oh shit, he's fucked up about it. Yeah. I think I should feel something. You know, it makes you like react like, you know, it's, it's go time. He's yeah. fucked up. Let's go. You know, and then you just, it just becomes like, like nature, like, you know, like 
you feel like you have to when you're in that lifestyle with with all these all these guys in that ambiente in the streets that you have to become like numb to the emotions like not get too attached think, to certain I things I think you, you you think you have to become numb I think you start just, becoming like naturally you know you start becoming like you know mm. like as he said seen intentarlo it's just happening yeah 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 cuz i I've, i've lost a lot of friends lately one, recently one of my friends passed away mm -hmm. in prison and that one kind of hurt like me dolió like ah oh. you know like kind of like cuz i would talk to this for all the time he had a cell phone he texting and you know yeah he, he was my go to guy he, he, and it kind of hurt i don't know maybe because i'm older now you know and now like um, When you're young, it's kind of exciting, you know, everything, like, like, you chopping it up with another homie, like, hey, they killed the homie, what, where, how, who, whatever, you know? Yeah. You answer all these questions, but it's more like you're trying to be a grown-up about it, you know, like, you, you know what's up, you're trying to, or, or you do know what's up, you know, but but now, as you get older, now you, you see it in a different way, like, it's a loss is a loss, you know? And back then, I don't think you... You don't um you don't you don't really like I mean if you're seeing like yeah that. no it's normal ah, otra vez o, otro día and then that's happening yeah, you yeah, know yeah. what I mean and you can't like you just gotta keep going because it's gonna happen again yeah so you gotta kind of like stay on your shit so I mean but that was L A but at the same time it was fun you know like L A was it, it was fun being out there and the parties or whatever the homies and I remember we'll go, um, you know, all the gangs will caravan to cruising, you know? Yeah. You had to go deep because if not, some shit could so, happen. Yeah. Unless you were there, like, to pick up on chicks strictly and be low-key <laughs> to pick up on chicks, you know? But yeah. for the most part, like, you go deep and and most of the time some shit happened, you know? Yeah, I think in one of your, in the podcast with John Berto, yeah. you, you mentioned something that I found really crazy. You are now friends... With your enemies, yeah. How did how does that happen? What? Nah, well, I think that that since they go through the same shit, and now you're older, like I've chopped it up with some of them, you know. Well, we always chop it up, you know. And it's like, um, they just like they've been through it, and and so it's like, um, te entiendes? Sí. You know? Uno se entiende al otro, like. Then, like you've been through that it, too. It's like jail, you know. You, Right here, you don't get along, but you go to jail and you get along t tough with your enemies. So it's the same shit. So now that you're older, and some of those relationships come back out to the street. I'm, I'm in there fucking with the homie from this or that, or well, that's my boy in there. You come out and that's your boy, you know? Yeah. So that, that's I think that's what that is, you know? No es que you're out looking for friends and shit. Because <laughs> shit could still happen, you know? I could go in an in enemy turf. I'll get served. You know, I'm still aware of my surroundings. He, and just out of respect, no more. I'm at that, like, nah, I'm older. Like, you know. Yeah, it's kinda like, different phases, yeah. Cosas cambian. How you said, you're you're older. You already been through some stuff. And for the people that don't know that, it, again, are, are starting to know you a little bit better through our channel, you went out to, to Mexico. Yeah, like in two, 2000. I don't know if it was 2002, end of 2001, somewhere around there. Some, I went to a party where, where a gentleman lost his life. Next thing you know, I'm on the run. And um, and that turned into, like, another, like, from when I left to the time I came back to L.A., probably, like, 16 years and some change had passed. So that was, like, a, a otra etapa, you know? It's a whole different chapter. Yeah. Cuando, cuando te fuiste para allá and then you're on the run... What's that? What's that initial change in your mind? Because it's fucked up. Because you know, um, porque dejas todo over here, right? You leave everything, and, and over there is it's just different. Like a lot of fools over here, say, me Mexicanos, they go over there and they fucking crying to come back. They're like, oh hell no, they just, you know, they're yeah. like, <laughs> they act bo over there, over here, they're just on some broke shit. But they go over there and they try to act all bougie, like, oh yeah, you know, nah, I'm from LA. Or some shit, and you know, like, <laughs> what the fuck is this? Like, yeah, start, yes, that shit hit me like that too. I go over there, and I'm like, you 
know, you can't wear no fucking crispy whites over there. Like, <laughs> and some of this, that shit would last one day. Not even I the first step outside, they're already done. Yeah, I remember um, one of my one of my homeboys, he's from Tepa, Tepatitlan in Jalisco, right? Mm. And if you know over there, uh, that area is called Los Altos de Jalisco. Yeah. But over there, the dirt's red. And I remember um, I went over there, like, like I was in another part of Jalisco, but when he went down there, I met up with him, right? I remember I had some brand new white Nikes when I, we're hanging out. Fuimos, a, you know, pinches white. Las fiestas estaban pasando en Tepa. So we were at all the, like, at all the spots going up. At the end of the night, I just threw my shoes in the trash. I'm like, estas madres no tienen remedio. <laughs> it done, so, like, they were just all red because the dirt's red right there. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So, but small things like that, you know, like, it's, it's not the same. It's different. Yeah. It's a different way of life over there, you know? Como dijiste, en, entrando aquí, aquí te crees la gran verga, and you go over there, and it's, you think that is, and it's a whole different lifestyle, yeah, it's a whole they'll, different way. They'll, they'll, you'll, you'll be reminded over there. Yeah. That you're not in the U.S. Yeah, so. Because there is by the, the, the cheapest fucking cop over there, you'll get pocket checked by a fucking cheap ass, fat ass, out of shape ass <laughs> cop. Yeah. You know, or and and to 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 weigh up there to another level where you're just like MIA. I when the tofista paya and everything's happening, what's that? Um, you're a big dog, right? Like I got the I got with all your homies, and then you go over there. How do you now adapt to the lifestyle and that way of living over there? That was again different than over here. She was a culture shock and I and I used to go to Mexico all the time like all the time my family would I would say that they would, we, would, we caravan from LA yeah my mom had like 15 16 brothers that they were, we were all caravan at the same time every time the same time of the year as I grew up my whole childhood we would go to Mexico like all the time so I've been going over there yeah but like for one month three weeks one month and here you are now for yeah I'll come back you come back from Mexico and you put a quarter in your hand, you'll be like, shit, small as fuck. Because, you know, this un pinche peso like this. Yeah, big, pesos, hell yeah, this shit's huge as you just fuck. Shit. You look at a quarter and you're like, damn, esta madre looks tiny. <laughs> well, yeah, even the, even the smallest one is five, five pesos. Yeah. And then that one's five cents from over here. So, but I, on the run, 15, 16 years. Yeah. Cambio tu vida. And still dropping music. Still dropping, not at first, but then later it like picked up. Started like once I got, you know, once you get it going, then you're like, all right, I could do this shit. And that's when the change up happened from, from like hard copies and analog. The game went digital, so that shit made it like a hundred times easier for me. You know, like mm -hmm. I don't need to press up a CD for what? That's just a bonus, like a, you know. Yeah. And um, so I just we went digital. And he, and, and, and with everything, you know, even recording, you know, like Pro yeah. Tools. Now it's like, it's faster. Everything's faster, you know? Yeah, no, it's definitely. Because, of, again, to try to get more into this, like, yeah. when you're out there, you go on that run, también te encuentras en, en situaciones donde, I mean, you're, a, you're already this person. You're already adapted. You're with people over there. Now, la vida que estás viviendo allá... What, como te cambia a ti personally, being, being with the people over there, learning that how things work out there, that you're not the top dog, that there's bigger fish in the sea. Yeah, well, you just fucking, it's like a reality check in a, in a lot of ways, you know? And it's like everything in life, you know, you, you learn as you go, you know? I don't think nobody goes and they're, they're already accepted, you know? Yeah. And you just... Just like um Porque te estabas moviendo in, in Mexico más, no? Yeah, yeah. You weren't yeah, just yeah. staying in one area, you were you were moving yeah, around yeah. and stuff. But for the most part I was at the border. I was in Baja. Uh -huh. But but you know, and oh now I feel like Baja's like my second home. Like mm. I embrace that shit, you know? Yeah. And like me fui bien pocho and I straight came back like Mexicano, like like you know, fools are nah, la verga, you soy Mexicano, like yeah. I'm Mexican out of here with that shit, you know? And and well, my family's from Jalisco, so I, I would I would back move and back and forth. But from there, you know, you end up in Colima or you know, you end up in 
all the resort areas, you know, you you end up moving around, you know, and seeing shit and most definitely. And, and, and once you start doing that, then then once you start moving around like that, you start like, oh, I could do this shit. You just gotta keep moving. Yeah. You know, and then you meet other fugitives. Get them in. You know. You know. I met a lot, but like real fugitives, I met a small amount, and they had their shit unlocked, and they, you know, sometimes no think think que see nada, but just by the shit they say, it'll yeah. put you up on well, game. You you said it you said it before. There's there's only two reasons you go to Mexico, to visit or because you're running away. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or oh, staying that long. <laughs> and, and, and Especially there. staying staying longer than a month. Yeah, yeah. Verdad. People, verdad? You know, people over there, they're they're on it. They're like, Ese you know, nos acá. and sometimes they're just looking and yeah. And, and, and well, también how you, how you said the the way you dress is is a very you stand out. You stand out right away. So I had to I had to shed that. <laughs> that was kind of tough, you know. Yeah. I'm wearing big ass pants over here in LA, get fifty sixes and fifty eight Levi's, he <laughs> banged out to wearing tight ass pants. You know that shit. Some of it's <laughs> like a. It's like a blow to your ego, you know? Mm. Tight ass shirts or, or or the people are not going to fuck with you. Like people that you're around, they're yeah. not going to fuck with you because they're like... You feel like they don't they won't take you that that serious? Yeah, that and everything. No, nah, they just won't... You won't even be around. They're like, man, get that fucking smoker away from me. Like, esa madre que? You know, that shit over there, that shit looks stupid over there. But now, you, now I see it like changing now again too. Yeah. See everybody fucking tatted in the face, but... But at the same time, that shit ain't, that shit's, you could do that, but at the, it's Mexico still. Y esa madre, it's not like, you know, it's not like. Is it, there's, es porque ahorita, como está diciendo, there, there's now the New Mexico, people think it's just the resorts, going to their family's pueblo for a week and for the fiestas, yeah. and in Guadalajara to the nice places. Yeah. Oh my God, that's Mexico. It's like, no way. <laughs> Métete al pueblo, güey. Like, go live there for a bit, you know. ¿Qué te dicen? What is it, like at 5, 6 in the morning, el pan, el gas. The way you wash your clothes, oh, se acabó el agua, el agua caliente. Yeah, so it's yeah. like, you don't, you have the luxuries. <laughs> <laughs> right? What's that first taste of that that life that you got over there? Or that you were that you saw that you were like, oh, shit, this is. I, remember, uh, I don't know if I said it in the interview. I was in this town. It was called Teca. Tecalitlan, not Tepa, Teca. And um, my boy's people was from right there. So we went, and then we went to his uncle's pad, and we walk in the, in the living room, and, and there's a bunch of little kids playing FIFA, but they had, like, some shit. Like, no, it was a hat, but that was the pot, and the pot was $1,500, and they were pure little-ass kids. They were playing FIFA for a pot of, like, $1,500. And then all these little kids were little-ass kids, and they had the new VW Bugs that just came in. It was little kids, dri- little ass kids driving VW because what they call them juniors, you know? Uh-huh. They're like, they, they, they kind of grow up with like a silver spoon in their mouth. So, lo que quieren, they, they got it. So, you see the little kids with the pushing whips, but they're like 11, 12 years old, you know? Shit. And, and I get over there and I ain't got shit. And it's just another blow to your ego. You're like, damn, that little kid got more money than me. You know? How do you handle that? That like. Nah, well, it don't matter, you know? They're little kids at the end of the day, but, but, you know, you just, that's just, you just seen these things. So it's like, you're waiting for it because you're going to get a shot to do something. You you know, you might get used or, you know, or you, you know, somebody, you get blessed to, to, to make the right move, you know, but it's just Mexico. It's like a totally different. Yeah. It's like a different, um, animal, you know, it's. Yeah, different animal. It's definitely... And I seen how they, like, people, they fuck with the cops, you know? It's like, over here, you talk to a cop, you a rat. Ah, se va tateando rata or some shit. Yeah. But over there, it's an asset to have a cop on your team, you know? And, and, and they, um... I seen that, you know? Yeah, no, 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 definitely. That, that, that was even an eye-opener for me, like... Like, that, that person that we were at that house... That day, that was when I seen it, que llegaron los, like, feder- like top dudes de los, de los, back then they were called los, los federales, what was the trucks, I forgot what they said on the trucks, because they keep changing their names, every time they fuck up, when the new president comes, they, they yeah, change, they change their it. Whole, their whole, their, their logo, they change <laughs> yeah. the same copy, try to make shit better, yeah, same shit, but they change up, so, 
Like he had like military dudes there, federal cops there, detectives there eating at his table, you know? Yeah. Like yeah, normal. Compadre, son compadres on top of that. <laughs> you know, compadre, whatever, you know, and you like, all right, this is how it this is how it's this is how it's done and you know. Yeah, la estando ya there had to be moments over there that like changed you. What? There was times where I just want to turn myself in. I I couldn't take it no more. I'm just like, man, I just turn myself in. Fuck this. Like, for different reasons. There's times where like, I just didn't like it no more. I'm just like, I don't like this shit. And then there was times where like, man, this shit's too crazy. I might not make it. I, I'm, I'm gonna just fucking go to the border and like, yo, I'm a fugitive. <laughs> just turn myself in. You know, like I'm thinking that. Yeah. I, I didn't do it, but. Voices in your head start talking to you like, hey, que vas a hacer? It's just getting, getting cornered in. Yeah, no, no. And sometimes you feel they, se calienta, se calienta todo, and you just, I was just talking to my boy. I mentioned him in one of the podcasts that, that he was on the run 20 years, and they got him two months before me. And I remember cuando lo agarraron, I was looking at the Zeta. Zeta is this newspaper. It's like, this shit's like, El Alarma, basically, like, it has everything, details, like, every fucking week. It's like, yeah. man, how the fuck they know this? They know every detail. It's like TMZ. It's like, you know, there's got to be someone on the inside giving them all this info, and plus technology or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fire temps or whatever. So, I, I'm, so every week when it comes out, everybody gets it. So, you know, boom, I see them on there. I'm like, damn, I think it's him, you know? Yeah. So it's kind of like a black and white picture. So I was like, damn, all right. So that's the way. Yeah, one, one of my boys, and he's like, hey, agarraron aquel way. And I started like, how they get him? Now you want, I want to know exactly how his capture was. Because, yeah, because now, now it's. I got to think, okay, are, is that how they're going to come at me? Him, they tricked him. This fool's arguing with him, talking to him, and then boom, turn around. And it was something else, you know? But they were. He, so I talked to him. He just got out. Oh, he's been out. But I just talked to him the other day, and we're just like, we're like reflecting on all the shit we went through over there, and and how I got out, and he got out, and and he's on some like like the same shit I'm on. Like he's like, hey perrito, nah, I got a second chance. He's driving fucking eighteen wheelers and shit like that now. He's on some other shit like, yeah, like, nah, fuck that. Like you know, second it's, chance of it's time to do like, yeah, yeah, because you do it different now, you know. Yeah, over there is supposed. It's out of like necessity. Okay, you end up doing shit over there, you know. Yeah, but when when he says like to change, I mean everybody want everybody. He said, "Oh, see, when the time will change." You nah, know, this time over there, but but you're you're changing as you're going. I was changing for a, the whole time. I'm changing. That that don't that don't that don't change the fact that you're in a fucking war zone. Mm. So yeah, you're changing. You're getting smarter. Look, over there, it's like a field of landmines. If you take the wrong step, boom, there goes your leg. Take the other one, boom, there goes your arm. So you got to like, it's, it's kind of like strategy, you know? And us, we came from L.A. We already like almost, almost kind of trained in civil war by the time we get over there, you know? Yeah. And then you're dealing with fools that get military training. And I don't know, it's just a bunch of different characters and people and when, and, and throughout those 16 years, like, were you ready to, like, all right, see what pasa, like, whether I get captured or die, I'm good? Man, nah, hell nah. You don't want to get captured. You don't want to <laughs> die. I didn't want to get captured. But but there was times when I was. I was, because, look, pasan three years, then pasan five years. Then you're at the seven-year mark, ten-year mark, you know. Man, a gang of shit has happened throughout those years. Mm. Gang and shit, fools are dying, fools are just even even like personal shit like your family. You 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 finding out information about your family in the States and you can't do nothing. You can, you could reach out, you could do shit here and there, but that's even fucking with you. No no like I, I, I told that burnt out like this ain't narco season two all the time. It's not madre is everything, you know, it's all kinds of novelas mixed in one, you know. <laughs> well, people see the the movies and like again like those series of narcos but it's like you literally live the real life shit that I mean 
if you watch it, I'm sure you're like, well, I don't yeah, think it works that way. A fucking business owner is subjected to the same fucking issues that a a trafficker. They might he has a successful business. Ah, levantenlo la verga. Yeah. Or, or anything, you know. Yeah. It's just like um. Cause you got captured in 2016. 2016. Shit, take us through that. How the outside my house. Um. I already had felt it for like two months. I knew I, something was strange. I had this one camera across the street from my house. It was on the third floor of, a, of another house. Because the owner of that house was my boy. He was this, um, he was a deported dude from over here. And um, he was like a gardener. He was a security guard, handyman, everything, right? So I had one, so, and it was like sort of like behind a tree. So right where it looked down... Cars were parking there. From there, you could look straight down my street. So any little thing was, it, you didn't say light pad. So, you know, the cameras, even if you're not there, it, it'll glitch every time there's a movement. So you rewind to that part of the camera. You're like, hey, what the fuck? This car was here four hours. And, and, and um, where I list was at, people don't park on the streets because the Los Estatales, that's the, the state police. Mm -hmm. In those days, they were, man, those fools were like, they were corrupt, but they'll be rolling like in two trucks, right? So it's like four and four, eight of them. They'll just be patrolling. A car's parked right there. They're jumping out on that fool. They don't investigate the fuck out of them, beat them up, take them to your house, rob your house. Like, so for a car to be parked there, it, it's it, it's weird. Yeah, and that fool's fucking ordinary. lucky that they didn't pass. Or even me to come home sometimes, I'll call that dude. And um, le hablaba al güey, le decía, hey, ya pasaron los pepos? He goes, nah, no han pasado, so I'll just, I'll, I'll hold out, like, another hour, two hours. I'll text them, yeah, ya pasaron. Then I knew that they did the round, so I could come and, like, dip into, like, my area, because those are the ones that caught fugitives all the time, those the state mm. police. They were, and those are the ones that got me. In the end, those were the ones that, that got me. So, um, yeah, they got me that day. I went, I actually went and was throwing the trash. And I threw the trash, and I was like, man, they were looking at me in the car. They were in, a, like, these little cars. They, And I knew this shit. They had these, over there, they got, like, Nissans and Toyotas that they don't have in the U.S., like, different little shapes of cars. So over there, they had these ones called Tita. I don't know if you've seen them, like, T-I-I-D-A. They're little Nissans. They're like little triangle cars. <laughs> and everybody knew that the Statales, they, their undercovers will, will, will be in those. And I knew that because... One time on my street, there was these two brothers from Sinaloa. They were pilots, and they would land planes in Ensenada. It's straight sus <laughs> suspicious-ass operation, you know? <laughs> and, and it's funny because I, um, I remember that uh, um, they had two sons, right? And then one time, and then I had a daughter, right? And then they, like, were fucking with my daughter. The two little kids, told, they call her Negra. It's my daughter's dark. And I told her, man, I told my daughter, go, nah, I don't want to. Man, go tell him. So my daughter goes and tells him, crying. Dice, papá, que chingan a su puta madre, you know? <laughs> and then, um, and I remember these little kids have fake AKs, and one kid was telling the other little kid, yo soy el chapo. No, no, tú eres el mayo, yo soy el chapo. Two little kids, I just I always remember that. But their pad got raided one day, right? I'm coming home, and I see a gang of trucks right there. So yo me paniqueo, I go into some other street, then I go up in that third story of that house, and I'm just watching for like two hours. They come out with a dude with a black bag on his head. They, end, they eventually end up leaving, pero se quedó un tira watching that pad. So I was like, I, I knew about those little cars, you know? Yeah. But that day that it happened for me, I just, something was up. Obviously, two dudes are looking at me in the little car, and I had seen them in the cameras already. But I was like, ah, you're tripping, you know? Yeah. You've been, you know, like when you're paranoid that long, sometimes you talk yourself out of it. You're like, nah, you're tripping, fool. Snap out of it. It's nothing. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just your mind's fucking with you. Yes, that. Hell nah. <laughs> when I came back in the gate, I buzzed the gate. It started closing. I, that way, if they were coming, they could close, like right behind me. They rammed that shit with a truck. Another truck popped out of nowhere. Those Dodge Rams, that's what the... Statales rocked the Dodge Rams. The, the Municipales rocked the Ford F-150s. But the Statales are the, are, the, are the Rams. That food just, they rammed the whole gate through. 
snatched me up like in, I don't know, like 10 seconds, 20 seconds, some quick ass shit. I was out of there. Well, what you tell, what was that? Like your mind right there? What? Cause I'm sure shit again, spinning. that shit's like, that shit's, it's, it's, you know, it's like, um, it's almost like a car accident. You know, when you're in a car accident, yeah. boom. And then you're kind of like disoriented, like for a little what bit. What the fuck happening? Yeah. What's going on? But right there, it's like a kidnapping. I didn't even know it was a cop. So I thought it was like, yeah, somebody. Levantaron. That's it. Yeah. Este, yeah. Then the fools ended up being cool. You know, they told me, they're like, hey, we don't even care about you. We're just getting you because the fucking U.S. Just keeps bugging. So we don't give a fuck about you. And they told me, we're the ones that got Little Grifo. I don't know if there's another homie from San Diego. He's a rapper. They had got that fool. I remember it was on the news over there, Rapeador, El Grifo. Like, they sensationalized it on, on, to make it seem like they're doing something. You know, we're, we're catching yeah. Americans, wanted in Mexico. <laughs> like, we're doing something. But uh, over here, they're like corrupt as fuck. Yeah. You know, right here, they're like, you know, catching rappers or whatever the fuck. When they captured you, did you basically were like, was ya verga? Ya esta? Yeah, once once I knew it was them, that it was them, because at first you don't, well, you don't know over there. Over there, the cops it's get either. and just turn you over to your enemies, you know, so. Yeah. Once they took me to their um, headquarters, yeah, I knew it was that. It was like, it was like a little bit of weight off my shoulders. Like, mm. Kind of came off, you know? But that was the beginning of the next, of a next, um, like something to stress about new because now I got to fight a case that mm. anything could happen. And didn't so they put like the death penalty over your head first, too? At first, when I first got there, because the thing is, it, it's called, those cases are called special circumstances cases. So let's just say I break into this house. That's a burglary. Pepe wakes up out of his sleep and catches me fucking pulling out the fucking family jewels and I crack him in the head with a hammer, and he dies. So when a murder happens in, in the midst of another crime, it becomes a death penalty automatically. That's called special circumstances. So they, that's what they charge me with, you know? So, yeah. But, you know, I just got to the county, and I just was always trying to be positive and praying my ass off, all that shit, you know? Mm. And just try to focus on that. And, you know, también ahí, it's a different world. I remember um, that first day I jumped on the phone, called my girl. I'm right there in Supermax. I get on the phone and I'm calling my girl. And I hear, boom, 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 squeak, squeak, squeak. Because the floors are like this. Supermax, the floors are this, uh, polished concrete, right? Uh -huh. So they're fucking socking some fool out under the stairs. <laughs> He's getting, you know, two or three on one or whatever the fuck. He's getting DP, discipline, or whatever the fuck. And, you know, now it's like, damn, I'm here now and this I mean I just entered a new world where it's like now it's like I yeah I don't I don't feel like it's that personal like it's just business it's mostly business yeah LA. but LA the LA jails is it's gonna be personal it's like you ain't going nowhere where are you gonna go to yeah where well they they say like the LA County is if you survive there you can survive anywhere no and I think probably all fucking county. I've seen shit on the New York County jails. It's full wild as fuck. <laughs> Chicago County jails. I think all county jails are like Yeah. That. You said something uh, major right now. You said uh, praying. How big is that in your life? And how big has that been throughout your journey? Dog, like, you got you to gotta have some kind of like, I mean, my, me, I don't know. Some fools might just be atheists all the way. Like me, I kind of like focused on my spirituality, you know, I feel like that shit carried me all the way through that all that whole journey. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't get into spirituality until probably like the sixth or seventh year over there. Mm. You know, I remember the first thing they ever gave me era una Santa Muerte de siete colores, and I was just like tripping out on it. It's a little skull, and they were like, "Here, give us give us some tobacco," or like I didn't know. I was like over here, yeah, just messing with it for the first time and like and then that's it I just had that and then later I got into the Afro-Cuban religions where it's more like kind of more structured and there's rituals and ceremonies and all this weird shit and that to, to the normal eye like you see it you'll be like a la verga somebody's el diablo you know you probably get spooked you know what I'm saying yeah but well, what's, one, what's one of the like the one, one's called Palo Mayombe 
Palo Monte, Palo Mayombe. It's just like a African. It's like by it's in Cuba, but it's by way of like Angola, the Congo, like mm-hmm. there. And it's just like it's just some rugged shit. But it's like, you know. How did, so how did how did that structure um, that and religion help you? That's mm-hmm. it. It just gave me hope, and they do these readings on you, and and, and really it's like a self help book. So it's like gives you like this little pathway. Mm-hmm. You can listen to it if you want can or you can't it's on you you know it's hard because sometimes they'll tell you some shit and you're like what how the fuck i'm gonna do that you know yeah I'm, this shit's so nearly impossible but but you find a way you know eventually you start you start how to work it and you're just like oh okay yeah so i had all those things with me and and you know i met a lot of cool people over there like i had a lot of boys that were freemasons so i'll fuck with them and all these things like that, you know. So I was just yeah. like, like reading and and just picking up knowledge, you know, like what I thought was knowledge, you know. Yeah, because the, there was a in that John Bertho podcast, you talk about you got a reading and and you they had read to you that you had death over your head. Yeah, nah, but that shit that shit popped out on me like several times over there, you know. That was that one time where um where this one dude um. He came as a friend, like, trying to play me. He was trying to, like, like, like rock me to sleep, basically. It's all good. Like, you just help me and shit like that. But but now that, that I fuck with people that he fucks with, that I never had problems with, you know? And and so they told me the other side of the story. Now I know yeah. the other side of the story where I was just speculating and assuming. Just by past experience, Yeah, this shit's about to happen to me. They're about to move in on me. They're going to get me right now, you know? Yeah. Just by past experience. And I knew if this is happening, I know what's the next thing that's about to happen. If this dude, I don't fuck with this dude. I know he's a fucking killer. All of a sudden, he's standing on the corner of my house or some shit like that. You're like, what? Nobody knows where I live at. Why is he here? I Then you already know over there it's a, a red flag, you know? Yeah. So, you know... This dude pulls up, whatever, whatever. And then, um, you know, like that night was like a tough night for me. I remember I didn't sleep all night, but I had a daughter. Yeah. I had my daughter with me. And that was the night where I was just like, man, I'm just going to go to the border and turn my turn my daughter into the border to like just keep her safe. That way she's safe. Yeah. You know, hey, my family's American. They're on their, I'll call, you know, que vengan por ella, whatever the fuck. And, and me just... Get get you know. Get on with it. Let's let's yeah. Let's see what happens. You know. When, how old was your daughter at at that time? When they, she, I think she was like eight or nine. I'm not sure if eight or nine somewhere on there. When I'm not sure. When you had your daughter, cambió algo en tu vida? Like well, you yeah, personally? Well, you gotta you gotta protect a baby. You gotta protect it. Yeah. So, but again, you're in a war zone, trying to be like a good dad. So it's like. You still gotta like, you still gotta survive. What's your initial change that that you had made? Nah, there, it's not that it's not an initial change, but it's just like, you know, you. It's not that I was a bad person in the first place. I'm just living with circumstances. You know, you just you just living. It's like if if right now, I fucking you wake up tomorrow in Ukraine, what are you gonna do? You're a good guy. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Try to figure it out. You gonna figure it out, and 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 okay, I gotta go over there and get some bread, but they're fucking shooting at each other on that whole street. So you still gotta go get that bread to feed that baby. Mm. You might have to fucking kill somebody from either side to get that bread and make it back to her. You know? Yeah. You're not a bad person. You just wanna you wanna do what's right for your your baby girl. You know? Or you might have to sleep one or I don't know anything you know you might have to steal a tank or, or algo you know you just there's just so many um there's so many factors in play that it, it's just you know you just gotta like you kinda gotta like like wing it and, and, and move on gut instinct and did shit you, did you learn something about yourself as, as being a dad a girl dad specifically too yeah, well, you know, girls, they love you when they're babies. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but, 
But when they're babies, they love you, you know? Yeah. Man, it's just, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I learned it. I just, it's because I had her, so I, I just had to do what I had to do, you know? Just raise her, and that's it. Yeah, no, no, no. It's your, your life, your, your trajectory of everything from L.A. to Mexico, being on the run, being a dad. Again, these are all things, I feel like the way that you speak about him is just, I see it, I see it. That's, that was destiny. It's the way it's, it was the way it's supposed yeah, to happen. It played out. It's the way it played out. The way, it, I mean, the way the power above wanted it to play out for you because the way you speak about it is just so, it's so easy because, like, nah, there's nothing. Hell no, nah, that shit's hard as fuck. It was, well, it you was lived hard. through it, that's right. But like, it, was, it was hard, honestly. Like, I remember um, I, this one time, this one, I, this one I got the cameras. I, this is when I put cameras all up. I remember um, they had killed my boy over there. I had a friend. They had killed him, right? Mm-hmm. And and the thing is, they wanted him to set up his boss. So they went to him. They're like, hey, set up your boss. And he was like, nah, I can't do that. Yeah. The person's like, been looking out for me. So they came at him a few weeks later. Hey, set up your boss. Man, I can't do that. On the third time, they're like, they're like hey, well, let's have a meeting. So he knew something was up. So he go, goes to the meeting. They start, they, they start, you know, they let off on him. He let off, they both let off on each other. He gets hit. He, you know, he makes it to us. They clean him up, but, like, it seems like they don't do good jobs over there. And, um, and he passed away. So there was a dude that was on that team, but he had fell out. So they were after him, too. But he was there in a meeting when they said, the next one, we need a, we need a, we need a, um, Merc is Rabbit. Rabbit got to go. And I remember when that sh- he came, he was kind of like shook, like, hey, he told my boy first. He told my boys, he's like, hey, pa que le digan al coño que se ponga vergas, like his name popped up, and they, they want to, like, execute that fool, you know, so, and they're on it. They're, like, working on it. So that shit, all those things are, like, they're, like, sirens inside your head, like. like oh, so, shit. Yeah, and, and so it's, like, you know, it's almost like you. Okay, you know, you take it in. Okay, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna yeah. cameras. That's that was my, that was my fucking it's logic. Right, the poner cameras, and if they come, you're I'm ready. Barricade up, and I'll just, I'll just fight it out with them. Which is, there's no, <laughs> there's no, it's just all L's. You know, like there's yeah, no wins there's right no, there. Like yeah, like there's, there's, there's hardly no wins. You know, everybody loses in the end. You know. Yeah, there's wins, but you know what I'm saying like, no, you know, well, no las cosas que like stuff like that. Like, I mean, the things that I would say were dramatic. Is this something normal that that could happen, especially being over there? At the end of the day, everybody loses in the in the sense of si matas a alguien, well, there you have over your head, right? Like, it's just again like your the story that you have. Even now that you're a free man and now the shift that your life has gone into, you know, working with some amazing people, being on movies and still your music, again, the album that you have out, you're talking about your story yeah. through the music. Yeah. So I think it's very important to speak about your your chapters of your life that made a big, big part of who you are and who you've been and our reality. So... Um, and there is a, there is one of the songs that you, before. Uh, sorry, I'm here. Wrote my notes and stuff. You had there was um, you had about what eighty, a hundred albums that you had yeah. made. Yeah. When spread when you were over there. Recording like a motherfucker, like, cause that was another thing. Like, okay, all this shit's going on, right? So, so I just feel like. This shit might be the last album. I fucking so yo rayaba todo un disco en un día, ten songs. I'll write ten songs in one day, shit. and the next day I'll record all the ten songs, and I'll send it to 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 my guy, and then they'll mix it and master it, and then it'll get sent to L.A. Upload that shit, <laughs> you know. And and in esos días todavía no había que VPN y que, or else I would have been doing it from over there, you know. I, I yeah, it's like I let it come up off a server over here, not my IP from over there, you know. <laughs> Let them upload it from this side. And um, I just always feel like, and then sometimes it wasn't that. Sometimes, because the, the, there's different albums, right? So there's albums where where I was going through shit, and I was like, man, I want to I 
want to document this shit. And mm-hmm. there's albums where, like, dudes were just like, hey, talk about me, but change the name up. Say this, like like a corrido. Yeah. Like, hey, watch, I, I did this shit. So throw it in there, fool. And I'll be like, all right. But there's albums where, like, I was, like, in the bottom. Or I was broke as fuck. Or I was up and I was feeling like my ego was up. Like, ain't nobody fucking with me. Or, or shit like that, you know? Like, di- yeah. different things. Sometimes I felt different in the world. And sometimes I felt like the fucking scum of the world, you know? Like, yeah. whatever it was. Or, like, I was feeling, sp- let me do a spiritual album. Let me do this one. You know, like. There's an album I did. Um, it's called it's called Notor- Comando Notorious. Cause I was on some Brazilian shit. Like I was on City of Gods. Like estaba yo acá bien brasileño, but in Mexico, right? <laughs> y este, there's a song on there, and it's about it's my it's my boy's cousin, and this fool had like mad murders, like like like, that, fools, like yeah. a lot. Like if I say it, fools will won't believe it, but if you're over there, you'll believe it. Yeah. This fool's like a fucking legend, you know? And the song's called Máquina de Matar. And that fool was a savage. And if you see him, it's so he's a miracle, como un normal man. Fool wore lugs. So he's got huaraches. Like, you would never think that, but that fool was a killing machine. What you said right now, too, is this. You made albums depending on how you felt. You were storytelling. What I was going through. Yeah, what you're going through. So there's, there's times where you were at your highest you're lowest, you're more spiritualist. And um, I was listening to that song, War, and then you said, you said a part, it says, Vatos break down at the gates of hell. But that, that song's when I was still over here. That's when I was a kid. I recorded the song right here, two blocks away. That's from those days. Dang. Nah, nah, that was after. But still, that, that was like Conejo on drugs. Like, um, see, like, I was still fools. Like, right here, like, I remember, like, being a kid and, and the homies don't have, like, these little Visine bottles went in it. And they squirt that, homie, quiere carguita? And me, I'm a kid on a beach cruiser. They'll squirt that shit in my nose and I'll just be, like, high as fuck. I just trying to smoke a joint. But now I'm on some other shit, you know? And, um, and that song, like, that is about that. The beat's about that and everything. If you hear the way it sounds, yeah. it's just, like, See, like, fools think, like, like you know, like, w- the West Coast. When tú te imaginas the West Coast, you think a clean-ass lowrider, some switches, y que, y que a Dodger hat and some bullshit like that, right? But but I'm from right there. That shit was grimy as fuck. It's not like, yeah, the homies had that. But but um, I think, like, um, in those days, like, the real, like, life was kicking in, you know, which was drug abuse right there. Yeah, and it was like older dudes that were coming from prison with all these habits, introducing them to the new generation, and and we're gang banging, you know. It's like when you hear um, like dudes in prison, you know, they're in their cell, and they do heroin. Why they do that? They do that because they got life and they want to escape the reality for a little bit. So it's the same thing on the streets, you know. You're you're out there, you're you're amongst all this shit, and you want to escape for a little bit. Yeah. You know, and, and, and that beat is that. It's called War, and it's just, and that's when I started getting, I remember I was into lyrics, and I started, like, thinking, now I'm, like, all about bars and using smart words. I was reading already as a kid right there, and I'm thinking, like, like there's just shit that yeah. that song contains. That's like a timepiece. What's the difference between those albums and even the ones that you were dropping when you were in Mexico compared to your, your new one, The Reset? Oh, okay. okay, wait, 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 wait. Say, what was the difference between that and now that the, that album, the albums in Mexico, and the albums yeah. in the, re, the reset? The reset, correct. They're just different times. This is war, is the 90s. Mm-hmm. This is war, literally war. You know, like over here, fools are dying. Yeah. Every gang's taking L's, everybody's going back and forth. It's, that's, that's that. Uh, the Mexico albums was like, I better fucking document this shit. I might not make it. I might get killed. I might never come home. Something's going to happen. I better document this shit. And leave me is like trying to leave something behind. You know how fools send shit out to space? <laughs> Hoping some aliens find it. Yeah. 
And then or they, later they could, or they dig know, it up in the time capsules and time stuff. Capsule, yeah, yeah that, was time, that was my time capsule. Even mm. though I'm living through the shit, but I I was documenting like like what I was going through. The reset, it's, it's just that's a whole. Now I'm gonna tell you the story, type shit, and mm. and my new life, and not that I have a new life. I'm still the same person, same life, but it's just it's different for me now. You know, like after all all that, look, you know, Attorney Rosenberg. Okay, so Attorney Rosenberg. He didn't beat my case. The, the attorney that beat my case is Stuart Goldfarm. Shout out to Stuart Goldfarm. He's out of Encino. He's the one that got me the deal and got me home. Um, after that, I linked up with Rosenberg. So what happened with my case, I ended up pleading out to, a, to voluntary manslaughter. And so they gave me a six-year sentence, suspended, five years probation. Beautiful deal. Nobody's ever heard. Even Rosenberg's like, man, I never heard of that shit. Like, I never, like, the way the case was in the beginning... To end up like that, incredible deal, blessed. And the todavía estaba Jackie Lacey, la DA, like it, you know, you Google her, whoever was out there, Jackie Lacey. Yes, the, so Salvo, I end up linking up with, because, you know, Rosenberg's part of the culture, you know? Yeah. He's, he's around us, he's, he's, he's us, you know? So we, I start fucking with him, y un día lo invito a mi baby shower. El güey llega a la casa y we're at the baby shower y le cuento todo mi case, step by step. And then this happened and he's tripping out, you know. Y, so the final term, look, they gave me joint suspension, six years, six years suspended sentence and a five-year probation. But, when, but the thing is that that five-year probation, any police contact will trigger the six years. So I could get an argument when you push you. They call the cops that sit. I owe them the other four and a half because I was there for like, a year and a half, a year and some change, you know? I would arm oh. that plus the new case. So Rosenberg was like, I'm going to get you off that shit. So we went back to CCB court, filed some shit, and now we're going, now they bring back the DA that gave me the case, the, that, that was a DA against me. Yes, the, you know, long story short, short, they terminated the shit. He expunged my charges. He did all that shit for me, right? And, and, and he's like, let's take a shot. Let's celebrate. Yo me agüite. Instead of being happy, I kind of got sad. Like, not sad, but just like, um, because ahí se acabó la journey. That was a long-ass journey. This is a journey for the whole 90s, the whole 2000s. It ended that day right there. And instead of celebrating, I felt like, like, I don't know, I, I didn't feel too good about myself. I just felt like, just, I was just, um, kind of out of it like I don't know I don't know what it was you know mm. I'm not gonna say it's guilt I'm not gonna say it's it's just I just it was just a long ass journey yeah, he se acabó, you know and it took me like I went off of social media for like two months or some shit like that like I don't want to talk to nobody I'm fucking I just wanted to go hiking I kept going hiking and hiking and hiking and hiking and just fucking um doing that just I don't want to be around people you know yeah. I went on some like fugitive shit again. <laughs> Fuck everybody, you know. I would do my shit. Yeah. Yes, there. It's kind of like a like a personality death, no? Like that like something inside you is dying that day. So that's the funeral for that that story. Yeah. All those chapters, all that time, all those years. Today's the day that this ended. And now sigue el siguiente capítulo that yeah, yeah. but I gotta deal with that. I gotta mourn this, right? That's why going off social media, going on that fugitive type of stuff, you have you're mourning the death of that person, that that story that, that was you. Yeah, yeah. E -E. So and I already had told Prime since before, like, man, I, we got I wanna do a studio album. Mm. Like like musicians and I just like put a, put writers together, let's like do a collective, an album, album. Yeah. You know, not singles. Like, right now, it's a single game. Like, I'm like, nah. I want to get all, get all documented shit. The reset, like. Yeah. Be, be real. And, like, all the shit happened, you know, like, some dude that comes from the family tree from two blocks away from here. Me mandó un message. Hey, come through. Let's knock out a song. And you're like, nah, one song. Some other que. Like, yeah. do we peace? Like one breath, you know, like, <laughs> let's do some shit, and then w that led to, like, now we're in, like, 10 songs, 12 songs, 15, six, now we're recording, now we're, like, let's let's make an album, you yeah, know? Yeah, now we're rocking. And now, you know, we're, like, what I wanted, you know, the musicians, and, 
And then, you know, I want to get personal and t say things, like, about what I'm really going through, you know, like, so that's why I had that song, Momento, and yeah. Hope, and... That, and that hope, I think you said... It's an acronym. It means heaven's open, please enter. That, tell because the that's devil. that's how I felt, you know, it's like that, that day that it ended, I didn't feel happy. I feel like, tawitado, you know? And that song, if you hear it to the end of it, there's like an angel in the end, which is that actress, Lana Parrilla, she... She narrates it. She's saying like, "Hey, nah, you're straight. Yeah, yeah. Let that shit go. Like, come on in. You know." I think you you say everyone is hoping you win the fight. If it's time to face the music, I'm gonna walk along. Yeah, yeah. That's like a mashup. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. A, that's a piece of. <laughs> I did. Yeah, yeah. And then, okay, and then what I said. yeah, but like in that in that in the main chorus, and you say, "Tell the devil I can't work for you." Yeah, it's like. You devil's work for such a long time and and i'm not talking about like a dude that's red and got two horns you know it's just like that's just uh it's like a face to the they get, yeah but it's just like you know but it, it, it's just it's about balance basically you know yeah because uh watch that that short film El campo okay okay man for it was it 14 minutes 14 minutes long <sighs> From the beginning, the beginning was like trying to understand it, yeah. and again watching it to the end, it was it's saying a story. And, and the, what I was trying to tell Chris earlier, um, there's a part at the end that says "La bestia existe adentro si le das si le das de comer." What a, for you? What a, what does that mean? Like if you can explain that to us, because like, like, okay, I'm gonna tell you a, a, a I'm gonna. Show you an example. Yeah, please. There was there was this kid over there. I'm not gonna say his name, but he was a good ass kid. All he did was favors. Era un chalan. So he just that's all he did, right? So then, and and he had sisters. So everybody was like, oh, that fool's the homie because he got then todos trying to get at his sisters, right? But this is in Jalisco, so este way se lo traen para la border, and in the border, this fool. GQ'd out dude, like good kid, like anybody's mom would like him and shit yeah. like that, you know? This fool gets trained and this fool, this fool got, he ends up having, he got a gang of bodies to his name. This fool changed, you know? Yeah. He, geez, he, he wasn't the same person that I met when I went to that pad where the kids were playing FIFA. Nah, hell nah. This fool's, this fool's beast mode. And if you see him, you can never tell. That fool looks so calm. And then the last time I seen him, I seen him right there in T. This is the last time I seen him. I seen him at Macro Plaza. He might, he's, he's probably out there watching. I seen him at, uh, there's, a, there's a mall right there in TJ called La Macro Plaza. I seen that fool right there, and he's like, uh, let's exchange numbers. And I told him, like, shoot me the number, because I, I was, you know, you learn over there, you don't mix your phone numbers. I got the other one, the, the, the burnouts at the pad. And we just exchanged numbers, and that was the last, that was the last time I seen him, you know. But I heard he's here. But that's that's a person that fed the beast. Every everybody feeds the beast. Yeah, because it towards that different levels, you know, you might not be what he became, but you know. Yeah, because at at the it. beginning, that the other the kid's uh, friend says, "I've been lost for three months," and then towards the end, that it's why not? What is it? The dry the dry lake or something like that, the desert part of it. Yeah. And ahí están, ahí están los cuerpos de la gente que no, que básicamente que no hicieron lo que, lo que le despidieron. And now you have this kid that, you know, is trying to be innocent. That movie's about a real story. It's about a real kid. Kid's trying to be innocent and ends up taking them. They take that away from you. The innocence. You take, like, it, it, you take your innocence, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's like, um, it's like when you see a, like, like in countries in Africa, you know, like Sierra Leone, where they get for the diamonds and yeah. you know, like mass genocide, and there's kid, little kid soldiers, like little ass kids, going into like little villages and you know massacring shit. It's yeah. not like because because in Mexico it's it's not like that. It's um there's a different agenda. Yeah. But, no. Yeah. But the Tolmos is the it's the it's that same thing, you know. But and, see, I mean, I think there was even a video. I want to say about two months ago, the five uh, best friends and one of them, in order for him to stay alive, he had to kill all his best friends, unfortunately. And they put it all on video and they put it up. 
So it's like, again, now you're taking away that kid's innocence of what could have been a kid or a teenager at that moment. And now it's like, okay, what life changes now, right? Um, but speaking on like on the films, when you got out, you went on a movie and you played a, a big a big character in the tax collector and you work with some amazing people, Shia LaBeouf, George Lopez. Um, Shia, I think if everybody understands or understand a little bit more of Shia, he's a special individual. And when he came out on that uh, podcast with John Berthold, I mean, it was his story all in, what is it, a two-hour podcast, and he's telling everything from being at the highest moment in his life but really just being alone and empty. How how was that working with him and, and that relationship right there with him? That fool's cool as fuck. He, um, you, you, like, you know, you can learn from anybody, you know? So you, you, I learned from him just, like, watching him, the way he does his shit. Like, he's just passionate about his his. Like his his craft, he's just passionate about that shit. Yeah, you know, and 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 then like David Ayer running the show. Yeah, some más otro pedo. He's a fucking like he's like a mad scientist. And in these like rehearsals, some of these rehearsals got filmed. There's methods like acting methods they use for rehearsal purposes, where like you know like I didn't I didn't know what I was going through. But I, I, I went through it, you know, and now now that I know that I, you know, I take acting classes and shit like that, like the methods that were used, like they, they're, they're used to like, I don't want to say like break you, but maybe like, like make you more fluid and mm. loosen up and, and be what you got to be, whatever the, your role is, you know? Yeah. So like to work with David Ayer, that shit's like, that shit that's somebody else throw, it's different. Why, why, uh, why acting? Why, like, I mean, someone if they don't know who you are, don't uh, like they just hear your story, like, este way pa que se mete a acting. So what did what did acting do for you, or how does it play a role in your life now? Mm, I think like, well, it's art. That shit's art, you know. I think like for me, it's it's like the next step. Mm. You know, it's like a lot, a lot, a lot of musicians go into acting. And a lot of a lot of fools, you know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. They, they go into it, and I always knew when I was over there, you know. Like I would, I would, um, I just I always knew that if I, I I had a chance to get back, I was gonna get with it. Like I was like I could I could fuck with it. Like damn, I could do this shit, you know. Yeah. And I don't know. I just I feel like that character was perfect for me. You know. Is it crazy to see like your yourself? And like those in the in the big screen like that, it's weird to watch yourself. <laughs> Even El Campo, like <laughs> I gotta ask Prime and shit, like well, hey, how that shit look. Yeah. Like, uh, what's up with that shit? You know. Are you are you like your biggest critic? I mean, I I think everybody is. Yeah. I think everybody like. I don't know. I just um. At, at the end of the day, you want to do a good job, you know, and you know everybody's know. watching, and. The big biggest critics are out there. Fools hating and complaining, <laughs> thinking that they they could have they could do better. They, they would have been. I don't know who would have been able to kill that role. Yeah. Who? Probably somebody, but no, no sé quién, you know. Pero te llegó a ti, and, and yeah, it was for yeah. you, you know. Like there's, there's always a there's always someone better. There's always someone that's gonna be doing maybe the similar things as you and can do it better. But again, you're there for a reason. Like, you were placing that role for a reason. And only the people that worked with you and only you know why you were so good at that. And once you see the byproduct of it, you're like, well, I, yeah. I had just came back from over there yeah. with that energy all up in me, you know. Like, I had that energy. So that energy went into that character, you know. Yeah, no, hell yeah. That's that's dope. Um, I had some questions, too, that want to see if we could go through them and answer as best as you can. Um, what is the most confusing place someone can be in their life? I don't know. I just, for me, like, last time somebody was like, I don't know if this answers it, but, but fools were on some trip about, like, who can get, who, who has the, like, the most money and, 
who's most successful. And they asked me that, and I'm like, man, I'm not le verga. Five years ago, my, my life was hanging from a fucking string. Like, for me to be here, it's a fucking blessing. I don't, I don't care about that. That shit don't, like, if, if you would have went through what I went through, that would be the last thing from your, like, I see yeah, on your mind. Trying to flex on me with, with, with that shit. Yeah. This, this is a flex. Just, I'm right here, downtown. This, that's a flex. Uh, I just went over here. I just did that. That's, I got my family. I got my wife. I got my kids. I can fucking love them and, and, and not see them through a picture or a fucking phone call with a recorder coming out every fucking five, five minutes. minutes. You're, you're on a call from the yeah. county or whatever the fuck. <laughs> That, yeah. That's a blessing. Like, I don't, like, so, I don't know. I felt there, there, there was those times where I was, like, in limbo. Que a pasar. Where I was just, like, I was lost, for real. I was fucking, if somebody was lost, I was lost. In, in, in all kinds of ways, you know? Yeah. And, I don't know, I'm just, just blessed to be back, you know? Um... When becoming a father, what changed in your heart? Yeah, well, you know, well, my first one was a girl, so a girl's going to... Soften it up. Yeah, yeah. so it's just different, you know, they're, they're females, so, you know, now I have a boy, and now it's, it's, it's different, too, because, you know, you're over there, like, wrestling with him, punching him, like, Justin over there, <laughs> got him in the ring, boxing, that's, that's that shit, you know, that's cool, you want to see your, yeah. your son throw hands and, and do cool shit, you know? I don't know. I think it's just, as, as you get older, I think when you have kids, when you're, I had them older, you know? I think when you have them when you're young, you don't, you don't, you're still young, tale verga, you know, like. Yeah, learning still. The reason why, the reason why I said, like, what changes in your heart, because, again, you were, how you said when, when the whole case went away, um, you felt that death, but again, like, you were maneuvering through life at, when there's a war, in the middle of war, I feel like sometimes when, when you're fighting that war, with whether it's with the world or within yourself, like sometimes your heart does go empty where you're just like, ah, oh, you can't feel. Because if I start feeling any sort of attachment or emotion, pues a mejor no puedo funcionar. So when you're having a kid, especially how you said a girl first, was there like a little like warmth, I guess, in the heart, as, as corny as it sounds. It was, but I knew that I had to survive and I had to keep her alive and keep myself alive, you know? Yeah. But that's just, I think, that's just any parent. Every every parent just want to protect their babies. Like, Facts. No matter if it's fucking, no matter what, like, like yeah. us, like in my house, we have cameras all on the inside, so when me and my girl <laughs> are gone, we check up on the baby, says, make sure que no se los tan chingando <laughs> or something, you know? Oh, and, shit. And, and that's just... Yeah, hell yeah. Uh, what do you what do you what do you value most? Acceptance from others or acceptance from yourself? On some real shit, I think it's both. Because you know, you, you want fools to embrace you, but mm -hmm. también you you know, you gotta live with yourself. So you don't wanna fucking like yeah. sell out too crazy, you know, where it's like Oh, man, what the fuck is you know? But I don't know. I think you just got to balance that, that both of them, you know? Facts. What do you fear the most? Fear. I don't know. I know fear. I know real fear. Can you elaborate on that? That shit's like, fools don't know fear until that shit's on them. Like, and that shit's coming and you, and you could, um, you could see that shit coming. That's fear. So, um, like, I never known fear like that. So I was over there. <laughs> and somebody said, uh, I don't e and I don't even know it's fear. I, it might be um, just your, your survival instinct kicking in, mm -hmm. like adrenaline. And, and you know, you're going to, you know, it's that. Yeah. But it, it, it's fear, you know. But, you know, it's like a, what's beef, you know, a biggie. Mm, yeah. Beef is when it's like this. So it's like when fools say, ah, I got beef with that rapper. That shit's <laughs> fucking like, it's fucking stupid. That shit's like a joke, la neta. <laughs> that shit's straight up. It's so like, it's just beef. Ah, yeah, when there's beef, your whole family's gone. Shit. Everybody's gone, you know, or, or, 
it's serious, you know. So that should change my perspective on beef too, you know. Is it worth it? Nah, it's not worth it. Like, oh, it's the way he running his fucking mouth about you. Ah, you could you could keep that victory. You could you could have that. Oh, okay, mm. that's good. Cause, cause, and and in a way, it's like people when they they like uh, talk shit about you, and you don't and you choose not to engage it. Is you're giving them a pass because you know what you you could fucking do, you personally, not nobody else. Now that explains it too, man. I mean. The other one that very I feel very important, what is the power of prayer and what has it done for you? I think that shit's like psychological too because it's like, it's like you, um, prayer is like, you know, you repeat it so much, so, so much. I mean, there's different kinds of prayers. Correct. But you know, like rep, something about like repetition, it's like you're convincing yourself and then whatever you believe is true becomes true, you know, so. Yeah. So it's like, just, I was just convincing myself in there too, you know, like, hey, this, or, or even when I was over there, you know, I'll be like, when when you're in a situation like that, though, you're gonna talk to God, you're gonna talk to the gods, God, the devil, you're gonna talk to all of them. Yeah. And you're gonna sit there and you're gonna like negotiate with them and, hey, look, I'll do this if <laughs> if you do this or yeah or, or you're gonna sit there and like like, which is all in your mind and at the end of the day, pero. You know, you're trying to justify and trying to like, you're trying to make it, dog. You're gonna do all this, you know, off the wall shit. Que, I mean, nobody's gonna know about it, pero, but you know about it. So yeah, that, prayers, I think prayer is important. You know, like, like, there's times where like I get like a bad feeling, and I'm gonna go somewhere, and I'll make sure I go to my mom's, and I'll be like, ma, you know, because I remember when we would go to Mexico. You know, my my on my well, both on my mom and dad's side. They're like, you know, over there, they're heavy Catholics, you know? Yeah. And when we would um get ready to come back to the U.S., my grandma would be like, my this is my, my dad's mom. She would be like, okay, you, you get on your knees and she'll do, you know, te da la bendición. Yeah. For your trip back to the U.S. And my grandma would, on my mom's side, would do the same shit too. So, and that shit, that shit was like magic, you know? <laughs> so it's like, that shit, that shit's important, you know? The, at the end of the day, it, 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 it just... It all depends on what you believe, you know? Mm. And that's it. It's what that's you believe, you know? Only only you can decide what what that is, what you pray to, and what it does for you. Yeah. That's so what, like, even now, when we have those type of conversations, again, it's, as kids, when growing up, you know, like, yeah, your parents are like, we have misa, vamos a misa, rezar, so it's on you. But as we mature and grow up more, like how you said, sometimes we do become, in a sense, atheists. You're like, why am I going to do that? Why? What is, what, what is it doing to me? And then something tragic happens and, like... Right away, right there. Like Yeah. So that's why it's, like, one of those things, like, I, I told them last time where it's, like, yo, when you're ready for it at your own time without anybody forcing it on you or telling you, you know, you'll find it. Yeah. But, again, it's whatever it does to you personally. And don't be mad at the person next to you or on the side of you, whatever it is, just doesn't feel that same exact I mean, way. Like all kinds of religions religious people from different like belief systems and I fuck with all of them you know like I don't yeah like whatever whoever they are whatever they believe in I could you know I'm like I could fuck with them and have a conversation with them and yeah you know, break bread with them and it's important kind of hit you sideways on this one but let's see do you believe a woman can teach a man how to love can a woman teach a man how to love Love your girl, shit. Yeah, hell yeah. What what's your de- what's your definition now of love? Okay, when I was on the run, this that's when I started seeing my wife that I ended up marrying. Like like um, I was over there, right? I was just like living like a double life and shit. I was dating chicks like licenciadas, abogadas, doctoras, all that shit, straight up. Shit. But but it was like a double life. Like it was like they didn't know. I couldn't tell them nothing. You know, they oh, yeah. I'll go on dates with them and whatever, you know. He, 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 but I knew that shit wasn't going to go nowhere because eventually they want to, like, yeah. I had this name. That yeah. ain't my name in reality. That's my <laughs> name over there. You know, he, and then, like, in the end, like, I don't know where me and my, me and my wife, we, we linked up, you know. We started, yeah. like, dating. 
And that was another reason I got caught because I started, I was in love. I fell in love and I started slipping. I started cutting my hair short again, like getting a short fade because I had to yeah, yeah. come over. And then I would never show my arm, like the HPS. I would never show my neck. I was always covered up. But then me and her, we start going on vacations. We'll be over there in the vineyards in Valle de Guadalupe, past Ensenada. Oh, shit, yeah, yeah. And la, and la Cheto, yeah, yeah. Wine, wine tasting and just like around yeah. Americans, you know. And I know someone right there, peop, they, it's like now. I'll be somewhere and, uh, you know, you could tell, some, you could feel when someone's looking at you. <laughs> and then later there'll be a message and it'll be like, yo, I seen you with your kids. I didn't want to fucking, I didn't want to like intrude, you know. But yeah, yeah. Hey, I, I was right there. What's up? You know, so that could have happened. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I, I know how I got caught and how it all happened, but but like I'm saying I was in love. Me estaba lendo verga. Like, yeah. you know, I was like living like a, a normal life with her. You know, she'll go see me. You're back, you're back to normal at that point. Back to normal. And then, um, and then, then I, I you know, well, I, got a, I got arrested. So now it's all like, like I'm, I'm, I call her every single day when I was in the county and then write her and I had... If you knew how to draw, you were working for me. In the dorm, all tolos, drawers, all the fools that, they're all, they're all doing shit. But I had everybody. She has all of them. So she shows me all of them. And it's just like, I remember I had this dude from, um, uh, where was he from? He was from Pasadena. I don't know which one. He was from, oh, yeah, he was from, um, no, he was from, um, I forgot what, Pas one of the hoods in Pasadena. Uh -huh. He did me this dope-ass card, and it said, when the stars align. And that, that's how I felt like when me and my girl hooked up, the stars aligned. And, and just even my whole journey, yeah. in the end, the stars aligned. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you know, like, and, and, and like Justin always tells me, he's like, man, you know, like, as my wife's getting older, she's just looking flyer and flyer. And that's how I feel. Like, when he said that, I'm like, man, like, I now, like, look at my girl, like, I love her. Like, I always did. But now it's like, like, I'm, we have fun together. You know, we be places and. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, that's like, 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 and then plus we have the kids, but that's like love, like real love, you know? So, yeah, you know, they, they could show you some shit. What comes first, your wife or your kids? Ah, uh, he's fucking up. <laughs> no, the reason why, I, oh, I'll let you answer nah, nah, and then nah, I'll nah. tell you why. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> like, oh, that's, that, I mean, I would say it's the kids because they're the future, you know? Mm. We got to go. We're the, the parents got to go at one point, but yeah. they got to keep going, so. It's protect them at all costs, you know. Definitely. The ones. And I'm sure my wife will probably say the exact same thing. Yeah. We did our, we went and did the thing with the, like, what is it? Um, The will, the whole shit. Remember I told you we went and did all that? Yeah. We did it, we did it re re recently, you know. The trust, yeah, we went and did all that. So it's for the kids at the end of the day, you yeah. know. Yeah, the, re the reason I ask is when we had a concrete, yeah. concrete was like, people are not going to agree with, with what I said, but, yeah. you know, it's my wife. It's like, because if my wife isn't taken care of, then the kids are not taken care of. Because my wife is their teacher, their mother, their, ta their caregiver for them. So I need to have my wife first. And obviously, again, love my kids. But my wife has to be 100% perfect yeah. in everything she needs. So I was like. I mean, at the end of the day is what you believe. <laughs> I think that's Most what definitely. He, that's what he believes. But I. I think, like, the kids are the future. Definitely. You know, like, Wu-Tang. Wu-Tang's for the kids. Fucking <laughs> Conejo's for the kids. Conejo's for the kids. You know what I'm saying? All right, so over the course of your life, how do you look at relationships and friendships? Relationships, like how? Like, uh, like anybody that's a part of your life, how does that now, with everything that you've been through, how do you now look at, at your relationships? Well, you know, I, I, I don't really fuck with a handful of people. Mm -hmm. I've, I know a lot of people. I know a lot of people, but there's a handful of people that I really fuck with. And that shit's cool. I don't, I don't have no problems or nothing. It's the fools on the outside that the fools be on some weird shit. And, but at the end of the day, it's like, eh, you know, hey, it's can you serious, Can you, know? you recognize right away when someone just wants to be a part of your life because they want something from you? I mean, yeah, you, you can, but... But you know you exactly. bob and weave and shit. You know you bob and weave and, and but for the most part, like the ones I fuck with are the ones I fuck with, and that's it. And 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 it's mostly like people that that we got shit going on. Like we're thinking like 
you know, we're thinking production, we're thinking all these, all these things, like things like that. You know, similar mindset. Stage, yeah, yeah. You know, similar mindsets. Everybody else, they're acquaintances, so it's it's cool to like fuck with them when you're not in this world. You know, you go yeah. and tap in with them and. Well, especially like now, how you're saying, like in the chapters that that we're in, like you need similar people that are want similar things, which is that the future. Are, yeah. What are we doing right now to set us up for the future? And if yeah. you cannot align with that same goal, yeah. then I'm sorry, I don't have time for you. Yeah, yeah. Well, they'll fall off anyways, regardless. You know, on their own. Uh, on their own, they'll fall off, you know? Yeah. You ain't even got to really put too much effort into that. Just yeah, actually, one thing, algo que dije ayer, where it's like, over the course of people have met you, right? Like, they've known you from, be, way back. from way back, from beginning, and, you know, maybe some people get mad at, oh, you change, bro. Like, you change your ways. Yeah, no, the, they, they, I do, I have got that, but, like, fools want me to be bald and banged out, fools <laughs> want me to, like, like, all these, like. To stay the same, stay the yeah, same as you used to be. They don't know that, that shit, I dropped those Cortezes, I hung those shit up 2002, the minute I crossed the border. It's like, yeah. those shits were gone. You know, the Clippers went in the trash, all that <laughs> shit, toda esa madre, se acabó allí. The moment, the, the moment my life changed, all that shit was, it was a wrap. Yeah, because it... And there's no, like, yeah, I'm always going to be that, you know? You're always going to be you, you know, but... Nice. But at the end of the day, you know, you got to you gotta move forward and, and... Yeah. Well, it's good, like, como se los puse ayer, and it was just like, you know, people get mad that, that you change, but realistically, they're only mad because you came from the same place and they never changed. They never... Yeah, the thing is, a lot of people, too, the world's little, they don't leave the little... The little the safe zone, the nest. The safe zone, yeah. Yeah, they want to be like, oh, I'm good right here. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. over there it's a little bit more unsure or too hard. Ah, mejor me quedo aquí. Yeah, That's yeah. why, like, I tell people, like, yo, like, we're bigger than the city we came from. Like, it's we're always known for where we came. But it's just, like, expand your horizon. Look on the other side of the freeway. Look on the other the other city. Go drive yeah, down yeah. a couple hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it, it's Everybody different. Since I came back, is, that's what it's all about. Well, it's just been, like, traveling and yeah. Cool to like, you know, it's, you gotta, you know, like New York, you gotta hit New York, you know, the Bay Area, you gotta hit all these spots, you gotta go over the ocean and yeah. go to Europe and, and see all these things and meet all these people, you know. And like, I was in um, uh, in Munich recently in Germany, right? And, and I was trying to, I was trying to, um, I was trying to smoke some, you know, <laughs> so and the, this dude reaches back and he's like, and I'm like, hey, pues tráeme esa madre, aquí te la pago. And he's like, nah, because the, 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 the dude at the trap spot, he, he's your fan. He, want, he wants, <laughs> and I'm like, nah, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. He, he you know, and it's just, I just, you meet cool people all over the world, and it's yeah. just like, I don't it's, know. Isn't it crazy that, like, you're on the other side of the world, and you got fans out there, too? Yeah, yeah. And I, I met this dude, right? You probably watch this. Who's all banged out, tattooed in la cara, sureño, you know, and all this stuff, right? And um, and I told him how how you got into this, or como como te hizo cholo tú, como está, because this fool's really he was from a, a, an island off of Italy called Sard Sardania or Sardinia. Sardinia. And um, and uh, but he lives in Munich in Germany. He's a cook, right? And he told me, oh, there's a homie here from Westside Playboys, que se casó con una española, and he lives here and he works here. And I linked up with him, and now I'm, I yeah. grabbed some shit, some hood. <laughs> and, you know, and, and it's crazy, you know, how, how our culture, it's just, it's, it's everywhere. Like, uh, like, un Mexicano could go anywhere in this fucking place, and our culture's right there. Isn't it, I think, in Tokyo? Yeah, they're, they're big into our shit over there. Yeah, the, 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 even the lowrider scene over there, too. And then, um, but yeah, it's... it's they true. When I was right there in Munich, I met this dude, right? He's always on my on my Instagram. I never knew him. It's a dude, a little low guy. I would see he comments everything, likes everything, whatever. When I put that I'm out there, El Way replies. He's like, "Yo, I'm right, I'm here. I'm from Munich. I got a gift for you." So me and my girl are just you know bar hopping, eating, you know, yeah, just doing shit like yeah. sightseeing and todo, right? He, this dude comes. He's a machinist, tall German dude, regular man. Y me regalo una caja y es una Santa Muerte. He's a machinist. He did me this. And he's all into, that. like, that's what I'm saying. Like, our culture's everywhere, you know. And, yeah. and no matter where we go, like, we'll have a home, you know. That's People crazy. Embrace us, you know, like, oh, shit. Like, 
and that's, schools up from over there. And that's dope as shit. That's yeah. hell yeah. Um, pretty, this one's a. Have you ever smiled, but you knew deep down inside you were dying or suffering? Shit, all the time. Why, why, why smile? It goes back to Mexico. I'm smiling at my daughter. She don't know nothing. She don't know her dad's a fugitive. She don't know if people are trying to kill me and her. She don't know nothing. She's a little girl. She's playing with little dolls, little dollhouse. She don't know nothing. I'm smiling at her. See, mommy, see, see. That shit. But on the inside, I'm, my mind's like, they're going to come. When you smile now, is there still a lot of pain or yeah, no? Nah, well, you know, sh shit's constantly changing, you know. There's other things to be sad about. There's other things to be happy about, you know. There's shit that um that I was longing for when I was over there. Simple things like I, I long to just be in my mom's pad and just eat homemade food, you know. And like homies that 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 know, they're like, "Hey, fucking rabbit's mom, she got them dishes." You know, <laughs> that, that that Jalisco food is like my mom got it on lock, like so yeah. they know, you know. So I, I, I will long for that, you know, and, and then, and now I have that, but there's other issues in the house, you know, that they're kind of fucked up to hear and know about it. It's like, ah, oh, shit, now this is going on, you know? Yeah. What do you value more, loyalty or respect? Man, I don't know. I just, I see both of them fucking, <laughs> both of them betray you. Both of them yeah. stab you in the back. So that's like, that's almost superficial, like. I don't even know if that's even real, you know? Yeah, fools will respect you, but, but or, or fools will be loyal to you, but don't let shit change because that shit will <laughs> change right away too, you know? So you, I don't know, I don't know. I don't, that's, some, that's almost like Machiavelli, you know? Like, is it better to be loved or is it better to be feared? It's the same question, basically, you know? You know the book, right, Machiavelli? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same question, so... All depends on what you believe, you know. What's that? Uh, you want to like scare fools into respecting you? You could do that, or you want to like, like break bread, and then you know fools will be loyal to you. Yeah, because uh, you, know, you know. What's that question too? The would, would you rather be feared or loved? Yeah, that's Machiavelli. The yeah, place. yeah. So, but there was another one of, not a book, but Nipsey Hussle has said said this: Would you rather be at, at war with the world or at war with yourself? better yourself, you know, how smart yourself, like, oh, shit, yeah. shit. Yeah, hell yeah. Um, last question, man, and I think this is, <laughs> how to go on that ramp with the, with the questions, but That's cool. what would, um, what would be that best piece of advice that you would give a 15-year-old you? I think, I don't know, but I think that that, like, I feel like, like, somewhere in the future, I would like to start, like, a, like a non-profit organization where I could come into, like, the, like, come at the at-risk at youth mm -hmm. and come in with, like, fucking lawyers and just tell them, like, look, esta crime te van a dar this much. Esta crime te van a dar this much. After you do this crime and you do it again, it's going to double up to this just so that I think that, that if we knew more about the laws, mm -hmm. like I think, I don't know, like if I knew more about the laws and the and the outcomes and the circumstances, then you would like I don't know, think about it a little. You're not gonna listen a little. You know what? I, they all, they asked me this before. Uh, uh, I can't I can't give no advice to no 15 year old kid because, like you said, like it's I'm I'm them. I'm just like them. The only thing I could provide is just comprehension and understanding because. I know what the fuck they're going through, and and that's it. I could just hear them out, and it, I, that shit happens now all the time. I talk to little homies, and I just be tripping out on them. I'd be, like, laughing at them, and, like, not laughing at them, laughing with them, you know, like, yeah. they be telling me their stories, or or even when I was right there in the county jail fighting my case, little homies coming in, 18-year-old, those, those are babies to me, you know? Yeah. When I was 18, I thought I was a grown-ass man, but you're a baby when you're 18, you know? And I hear their stories, and we did this and did that, and I'm just like, 
tripping out on them, you know? Yeah. Even my little homies from my neighborhood, like, get run into them and they tell me shit. And I can't, like, I, yeah, I can't tell them things here and there, but it's their time to shine, you know? It's their, it's their, they're, they're up. Yeah. You know, I gotta, uh, me, if some old fool try to tell me some shit when I was young, lo mando a la verga, like, I ain't listening to you. Yeah. It's no old head, you know? Really, when you're young, you're not, you're not trying to hear no advice. Yeah. You're not listening to your parents. How are you going to hear it? From someone random. You know, pinche malillón de la calle. <laughs> yeah. 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 You've been through it, but... So since you have your son, what's that What's that advice for him? Just, I'll put that fool up on game. Like, with all that shit. Like, look, fool. Esta madre, this is, this is going to be like this. So you know? esto. But at the end of the day, it's his journey, you know? Yeah. We could, we could like... Um, you know, we could we could put them up on game like that, you know, yeah. game them up or whatever, you know. Pero, Teaching them. But at the end of the day, it's their journey, you know. You could, like I said earlier, I have a lot of boys get parents were on them, on them, and these fools mm -hmm. became lifers. Mm -hmm. You know, they were with the business, you know. Yeah. So no matter what their parents did, it, what it, it didn't work, you know. So it's it, it's everybody's personal journey. I don't know if there's like something. <laughs> creators you know they yeah. were, were like a little ant farm and they manipulate and move shit around just to, i don't know <laughs> yeah you no know, because i was watching the devil's advocate the other day me and my girl watching devil's advocate and there's that uh al pacino goes into that that last spiel when he goes up at god and he's he says like is it like you know like a big mind fuck or we don't know you know yeah so i don't know i think just Gotta like maneuver through this shit. I don't know. Life's life's a mystery. Life life is his mystery, best. You know? The best teacher in life is life. Like that's yeah, you're gonna know. learn it as you. Yeah, I don't know. You know. Yeah, no. I mean, you said this since the beginning. You literally, you live life the way how you needed to. Like there was no other way. It was just what was in front of you. You made the best out of it. You you survive you, here and now, sharing out your story and helping others through your art, which is not just in acting, but in also your music. And again, you're giving game to other people that are coming to you, asking you, or even telling you their story. So, I mean, again, I'm, I'm excited for everything that's coming, everything that you're, that you're in. Ho hopefully you get to this nonprofit ASAP, because yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, want, I would want that. I think I always think about it. Like, my girl always tells me that. So I should, you should be a fucking motivational speaker. I'm like... <laughs> I don't, I don't know how, but yeah. maybe, you know? Yeah, well, it's kind of how you said it. There's a lot of people out there that were in your shoes or similar to you that all they needed was just knowledge. They needed a little bit of knowledge, little bit of knowledge a little bit of direction. Knowledge is power, you know? Exactly, man. But I appreciate you, man, for taking the time, coming and sharing your story with us. It's also like podcast. Make sure everybody subscribes. Share it, like it, send it to everybody you need. You think needs to hear this story, so it's also like podcast, man. You already know. Viva la revolución. <laughs>